You guys know by now that the point of my show is to deliver a panoramic view on sports and help you see sports through a different lens. Our guest on today's show quite literally helped fans, coaches, players see sports through a different lens with his content creation. We're going to talk to this individual, get to know his story, overcoming obstacles, utilizing lessons from sports into his regular life, and ultimately having a major impact on the Marsh Valley basketball program as they won their first state championship since 1988. But he did so behind the camera. This is the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! This is the Game Time Guru podcast, where I interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports. So whether you're a former athlete, one of the crazies, or simply a casual sports fan, this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. As you guys know by now, my name is Shane Larson, host of the show for the past four years, and uh, super excited to be here for yet another episode. I want to make sure that everybody's following me on my social pages. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, as well as Facebook. Uh, those are where I'm most active. I know I don't have the largest following in the world, but uh, I would love to interact with any of the fans, any of the listeners, anybody who enjoys sports and wants to chat. Come follow. Uh, come follow me on Instagram. I'll put the links here in the description. Twitter, Facebook, whatever it may be. And of course, subscribe to the podcast and let us know what you guys think by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Guys, in the, the four years that I've been doing this, I get to interview a lot of different people with a lot of different stories. You guys know that. That's one of my favorite things. When I grew up, I was always listening to ESPN's like E60s and all of their different their different stories. And that's what got me so into this kind of, kind of work. So when I graduated from college and you know, I, I decided, hey, I need to do this. Uh, that's the whole point of this show is getting to hear from people and hear their stories to do, essentially deliver a panoramic view on sports so people can see them through a different lens. And today is a super unique opportunity because if you guys have been following me on social media and just anybody who knows me, the last couple of weeks were really special. Uh, the Game Time Guru, we, we got our media credentials and we were able to cover the uh, state basketball tournament. And not only that, I was able to do some play-by-play -play broadcasting for the NFHS network, which happened to be the three A games in the second round. So I got a little bit of mix of everything. I got to cover the games from my podcast side of things, as well as do some play-by-play -play for NFHS. And I happened to uh, not only cover Marsh Valley from the social media standpoint, but also from a play-by-play -play standpoint. So I got to see a little bit of both sides there um, in the media realm. And not only has the school got a cool story, well, all of a sudden... I'm getting hit up by another guy. Like I got to follow some of the players there and I get hit up by another guy here locally, <laughs> Drayson Fisher, who has also been on the show before. And Drayson was telling us, Hey, you got to follow this guy. And I go and I kind of follow our guests uh, page here. And I was just blown away. Um, and I wanted to get to know his story more. So that's why I brought him on. His name's Dane Wissenbach and he's from Marsh Valley high school senior uh, this year. And uh, we're just happy to have you on here, Dane. So thank you so much, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm excited for this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So before we get into your actual story, um, we're going to you know how, how athlete or sorry, athletics and, and uh, content creation and so forth mix together and what your part was in the state championship run this year. I want to know about your background, Dane. So currently you're a senior um, and we're going to talk about what's what happened, what transpired this season uh, for football and whatnot. But Let's take it back in time a little bit, man. I want to know how long have you been, you know, competing in sports and are you a, a, a multi-sport athlete? Like how long have you been competing? Yeah. So, um, I have been playing sports. I mean, ever since third grade, you know, basketball, um, that was, that's what I started with. And then, you know, flag football, but, um, uh, my three main sports that I do are football, basketball, and track. So. Oh, okay. So are you, are you pretty fast? Is that, is that the, uh, reason you're getting all of those? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the short, fast guy. <laughs> short, fast guy. Yeah. I love it, man. So, so what's your, what's your size? Cause I want to know what positions you play in each sport. Yeah. So I'm about five, nine, uh, like one forty five. So, you know, not real big, um, five, nine, if, if we're being generous, but <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, and then, um, 
So the second part of that question, so you say that again. So the position, so you're five, nine, 145 yeah. and football, what position did you play or do you play? So, yeah. So football, um, corner, uh, yeah. so DB on defense and then on offense, uh, slot receiver and then kick return, punt return. So. All right. Okay. So you, yeah. you are the fast one. And what, what, yeah. what, uh, <laughs> what event do you run in track? Like what's been like your main, uh, strength, I guess, in the track realm? Uh, my main event has been the 100 meter for sure. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, you're the, you're the fast one. You're the, you're probably the guy on the basketball court that I hated playing against my whole life. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the scrapper who never stops moving, who's fast. And yeah, it's just tough. That's awesome though, man. Yeah. Okay. So it's now we get a little bit more insight as to who Dane is. All right. All right. Talk to us about Marsh Valley. Where is this located for those who are listening around, even in Idaho, like nobody even knows where this place is at. Like right. real. A lot of people don't know. And so I want to educate the listeners, not just in Idaho, but across the country and in the other countries that we have this show downloaded in. So talk to us about Marsh Valley. What's the community like there and uh, the high school. Let's talk about the high school as well. Yeah. So I'm originally from Boise, um, okay. moved okay. to Marsh Valley, which is about four hours away from Boise. Um, so Eastern Idaho. Right. And we're about um, 20 minutes south of Pocatello. So, so Highland High School, uh, we're, we're about 20, 20, 30 minutes away from Highland High School. Um, so not too far, but yeah, we're over there in Eastern Idaho. And okay, so that's actually really interesting because Highland, you know, in, in Idaho, the way we do classifications, we've got like 5A, 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A. Um, yeah. and it's all different than different States. I know a lot of different States, like the one A's are the, t the biggest schools. Whereas in Idaho, the one yeah. A's are the smallest schools and it's based on population and enrollment into those schools and so forth. Yeah. So Marsh Valley, I believe is three A is the school pretty small. Like how do you feel the community is around the high school? Yeah. So really small community. It's very spread out though. There's, there's four or five different towns. Um, so the farthest being, uh, 30 minutes apart. So it's, it's wow. spread out, but it, it really is a small, small community. We're one of the smaller three A's. There's about a little over 400 students. So pretty, pretty small and, and pretty close community. Wow. Okay. Let's take a second and, and really put that into perspective. Did you just say like, so you might have classmates or teammates, for example, that live like 20, 30 minutes away from you? Yeah. Yep. Okay learning tool for me. Okay. So just so everybody <laughs> understands where I'm from here in the treasure Valley, um, literally where I went to high school was at Meridian, uh, back in 2006 when I graduated and we went, when we were in Meridian, just so everybody understands within a 10 mile radius, you've got your entire conference of all these five, a schools, right? You've got Rocky mountain, you've got Timberline, Centennial, Boise, capital mountain view. Then just about, you know, 15 minutes down the road, you got Middleton. I mean, Eagle high, everybody is all these 5A schools within like a 10 mile radius of each other. And, yeah. and what Dane said here is that this school in Marsh Valley, you've got guys coming to that school that are quite literally almost 30 minutes away. That's crazy. It's just for perspective. So everybody understands a smaller school. But what I love about those types of schools, maybe, maybe this isn't true, but I want to hear from your, your insight. Like there's a, a bigger community feel to it and the smaller schools because the community kind of rallies behind the school. Have you felt that through like the, the, the sports realm, at least like maybe it'd be football or basketball. Do you feel like the community is more engaged? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's definitely got that, that community feel, um, which might be surprising, you know, being such a small area, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty unique. The, the community feel that you get with a, a smaller, small town school like Marsh Valley. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's so it's cool. My my parents are from a smaller town in Utah, so um, I kind of that's what Marsh Valley kind of reminds me of is those those little you know they're smaller smaller field, but the community's always rallying behind. I think that's super cool. Um, here's a question now, Dan. You go into your senior year, um, stud athlete. Did you have any offers coming into your senior year? Do you have Did you have any colleges? Do you, Do you have any colleges looking at you before the season started for football, for that matter? Um, no. So I, I had a, a lifelong goal of playing college basketball and I was in the process of reaching out, um, you know, to coaches and, and people in the basketball world that I know that could help me. Um, and I just, that was just a dream of mine, college basketball, but, um, no, nothing, nothing real serious. I had some interest for track. Um, but yeah. 
Okay. So you're working, you were working towards these. This is what happens uh, with a lot of athletes across the globe, you know, coming into your senior year, you might not have any offers, but you're working, you're not done working. You're still yeah. working. You're looking right. out, trying to get, get your name known and whatnot. Coming into the football season, let's talk about what happened. Uh, because for those who want to have a little background here, Marsh Valley, so he so Dane's a basketball player too. Yeah, a dream of playing college basketball. You're a multi-sport athlete. This yeah. is a season where Marsh Valley was gonna make a statement, right? For basketball. They ultimately did make a statement. We'll kind of get to that here in just a little bit, but they made a statement. Uh, one of their first wins in a very, very long time for the state title. It was an amazing run. Um and you wanted to be a part of that, but let's talk about what happened during the football season and kind of go into, into detail here. Yeah. So my senior year, right. This is kind of the, the most important year, the biggest year, the biggest season for any athlete really. And I go into my football season. Uh, we're two and O, um, or excuse me, we're one and O. And in the second game of the season, we're, we're winning by about 20 points. Um, I just, scored a touchdown and there was about a minute left in the game so the game's just about over and I'm on kickoff uh kickoff coverage so I go down my my I was the safety guy um so I'm not supposed to go make the tackle I'm just supposed to be there in case something you know they break through or whatever and I'm running down the field and my personality, like, I want to make the tackle. I told my coach, like, kick it right. Kick it to my side. I want to go make a hit, make a tackle. And so he did. And so I was running down the field, and I planted. I went I went to make the tackle, and I planted on my left leg, and my, my knee just gone. Uh, completely ruptured my ACL, uh, fell to the ground. Um, and, yeah, I, I didn't know – we didn't know for a couple of weeks, of course, that it was torn. I, I thought because it started to feel a little better over the next week or two. And I thought, Oh, you know, I'll, I'll be out for a game, maybe two games. And then we'll, you know, we'll get rolling with it. And, uh, got an MRI and got the news ruptured my ACL. And for those who don't know, that means a nine month recovery surgery and a nine month recovery until you're back, uh, to playing sports essentially. So, that's a kind of a little bit about the story. Okay, man. So this is deep because uh, I don't think enough people understand injuries. They see athletes get injured all the time and it just becomes a normality or whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. normal for people. They're like, oh yeah, you got injured. Okay. Right. So this is where I'm glad I get to talk to you, Dane, because we get to unpack it a little bit more. When you got the MRI mm -hmm. and you found out, because yeah, like you just said, I'm, I'm glad you said that. That means a nine month recovery. And yeah. that nine month recovery is if you are putting in the work along yeah. with it. Right. So that's, that's another piece that we need to put into here. So what was your overall mindset? Like what, what did you feel your instant reaction when you realize, okay, like surgery has to happen now, like it's torn and all the things start spiraling in your head coming from somebody who's had an injured shoulder where I had to have that surgically yeah. repaired. The, the stuff starts spinning in your head. So I want to know kind of what your instant reaction was when you found out. Well, Leading up to it, I knew there was a chance that it could be bad, but I never, I never thought, oh, you know, this is going to be it. I'm going to tear my knee. I wasn't really sure. Um, and, and I tried to prepare myself. I even, I said, you know, I'm ready for whatever news it is for the worst. Um, you know, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So I thought, you know, I thought, okay, I'm ready. Um, well, I get the news. I got the phone call. I was at school and I get the phone call from my mom. And she, she says, are you ready to hear it? And I said, yeah. And she said, you ruptured your ACL. You're out for nine months and you'll have surgery in three weeks. And I, I, I mean, it, it, it all kind of hit me. Um, and I said, okay, all right. And then I ended up, I went out to my car, you know, um, and it, it just hit me. Like it hit me like a, like a truck. And, uh, I just started thinking like, this doesn't feel real. Um, literally sports are my whole life. That's pretty much all I know. Sports year round dreams and aspirations of playing sports at the next level. Sports is pretty much all I know. That's, that's, that's what my life was. And man, it just hit me uh, like a wave of emotions. Um, you know, my senior year, 
and 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 it really hit me and um honestly it, it was tough i mean i'm in my car at school and i'm just like i start crying and and just really it really hit me all the emotions hit me at that moment so it, it was tough tough to hear I can imagine. I, I think a lot of people can relate to you. So those who are listening to this, um, I'm sure there's some out there that can relate because like you said, all the things, uh, it's senior year, um, you're still working to try to potentially get your name out there. Uh, when that happens, you know, football season's over one, two, that stems into basketball that stems into track. I mean, there's, there's a lot that, that kind of dominoes into, um, and uh, obviously like the emotions are going to hit you because you, once you realize it, you're like, Oh my gosh. And that's before you even realize what the work is going to be like bef- when you get surgery and then you have to go do rehab. And that's, this is before the, any of the physical stuff happens. Yeah, this absolutely. is the emotional and mental stuff. Then you got a whole nother wave, like of, of things that happen, which we'll get into. But I want to ask you this, um, because when I started following you on, on Instagram and I saw kind of what you were doing, you were start, you started to document the journey. Uh, which I think is super cool and actually really important. It's it's cool for people to see, but what made you decide to document the journey on your uh, recovery process? Yeah. Um, what made me want to document the journey is uh, just so that people, people could follow along. I think one of the coolest things you can do is share what you're doing in life and share your journey um, because – then uh, the right people will come across your page and and can relate and and maybe who knows maybe your story will inspire people and and I just figured if I'm going to go through this um I'm going to share myself put myself out there um and let let people follow along um so I respect that that's what I love about it man is because people need to see that people need to there's going to be athletes out there maybe a young athlete in the exact same situation senior year right. They tear their ACL. They sh- they blow their shoulder out. They you know break their ankle. Who right. knows? And they they see your page and they're inspired. They're like, okay, he can do it. So can I? Okay, Absolutely. we can do this. That's that's yeah. super cool. Um, for anybody who hasn't, I'm gonna put the the links here uh, to to go follow you. But Dane, do you want mind sh- shouting out your handle for Instagram and whatnot for them? Yeah. So my my personal Instagram is at Dane Wissenbach. Um, and then my videography Instagram is at Dane's Creative. Um, and that'll be in the description. So for sure. We're going to put that in the description because we're going to get to that in a second. I want to talk about rehab so far for you. Um, how long are you into the rehab process for your knee? So I started physical therapy, um, well before surgery a little bit, but I, I was at surgery the next day after therapy. I mean, I was at, sorry, I was at therapy the next day after surgery and I'm just about six months into the recovery process. Okay. Okay. This is cool. So it's a nine month process, but the, tell us, is, is that six months? Have they gone by fast or has there been moments where you felt like the time has actually stopped? Oh, I mean, there's been moments, especially along the beginning where I'm like, dude, this is going to be a lifetime. Like, holy cow. Um, because a lot of it's just monotonous, the same, same kind of stuff. And so sometimes early on, I was like, um, man, this is going to be a long, long process, but but looking back, man, like it's, it's, it's kind of gone by fast. Uh, the last six months, like I've just kind of embraced it and it's, and it's really, uh, it's gone by pretty quick. It seems like. Yeah. See, uh, see I can relate to that too. Um, and there, the whole co- comment you made about, you know, being a lifetime when I was 28, I, I tore my shoulder out. I had torn it out when I was 18, never got surgery, did physical therapy for it before I went on a mission for my church. And then, yeah. you know, I, I kept, kept doing my thing. I was fighting on it you know, boxing and all my stuff. And then yeah, flash forward of, you know, almost eight years, seven years after I got home from a mission, uh, I blew it out lifting weights, um, mm. even more. And so I remember when I, I finally got surgery on it and, um, my wife and I were sitting there and I was going through a mental breakdown. Like, um, even as a, as an adult, like I'm going through a mental yeah. breakdown because I couldn't lift my shoulder. The simplest thing I was like, I, I couldn't lift it two two inches <laughs> off my side. And I told her, I said, and it hurt even just to hang my shoulder there. And I'm like, man, we're like three weeks post-operation. And I, I still can't lift my shoulder. I'll never be able to lift my shoulder again. And I started playing that mind game. I'm like, this is a lifetime. Yeah. I'm never going to be able to be, I'm not going to be able to function. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to do this. And I started right. going through, like, I mean, it was a downward spiral. Like I'll never be able to hold my kids. I'll never do it. Yeah. All that stuff goes in my head. 
and, you know, little by little, like it was the most annoying thing, but you know, the daily uh, physical therapy sessions, they're moving my shoulder little by little and didn't really think it was working at times, but then you start to see the progress little by little by little. And all of a sudden, you know, and it, it was a full six months for mine. Uh, it's not as much as a knee, but it was like legitimately six months yeah. before I could play basketball again uh, in a competitive setting, which I still play city league. And I try to yeah. do all my stuff in a competitive setting. And I remember it was a full six months, but if you put the work in, you'll get there. Uh, but there are setbacks here and there and it's a mental grind, but it teaches you a lot. But what I want to get into here yeah. is so. Well, hey, real quick, going, real quick. Oh yeah, go ahead. Don't mind. Yeah. I was going to add, it, just add to what you said. I think for me early on, I was just thinking about, man, I don't get to do this. I don't get to play football. I don't get to play basketball. What am I going to miss out on? And and I was miserable when that was my mindset. And and I think I, I shifted my mindset and I said, you know what? I'm going to embrace every day. And I, my only goal is to is to get the work done today. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about the game. I don't get to play in just day in and day out. And and then then when you stay present like that, um, for me, I was able to to go handle it a lot better. I wasn't worried about the future. I just embraced every day and, and I was able to handle it a lot better mentally. So that's huge. I, I hope everybody who's listening takes notes on that specific thing, the mindset, winning the day, be present, uh, do that. Because if you play that mind game in the future, like the whole future, what do I not get to do? Not get to do. It's a mental, it's mentally taxing. It will completely destroy yeah. you. And I'm glad you just shared that with everybody. That is huge. Whether you're a young athlete you're somebody like myself who was at the time 28 and tore his shoulder out. Anybody who's going through anything, right? Pay yeah. attention to what, what Dane just said right there. That was, that was huge. And one of the things to segue into that too, Dane, is you, you mentioned like, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. But you have a skill set that allowed you to contribute to sports, but just in a different way. And that's what I want to talk about now. And yeah. that's your creative side. What made you make this decision that you were going to, you know, I guess, We'll get into it, but how, you know, contribute to your basketball team. Yeah. When you're not playing, uh, utilizing your skill set of, of content creation. How, what, what made you think that like, and say, Hey, I'm going to shift and I'm going to do this for the team. Right. Yeah. So, um, I've always loved creating stuff, uh, really creative, uh, just like creating things. And, um, you know, at first when I got hurt, like I wasn't thinking about anything other than, man, this sucks. Like, you know. And I, I, I figured if I, if I can't play, um, why not embrace it and do what I can do? And so I, I've been creating content for social media, uh, just personally for the last several years. Um, you know, just, just speaking my mind, putting, putting stuff out there, videos, content, um, I used to, you know, just consume and watch videos and watch, read posts. And, and so I, I had been creating content, um, you know, for the last couple of years and I have some buddies, um, who kind of inspired me, um, to get into it. So I, I, you, I don't know if you know, Ryan Escondone with media X, um, and a couple yep. of those other guys I saw, you know, I I've been following what they've been doing cause I'm from Boise. I know who they are good friends. And I just, I just decided, I don't know what it was, but I just decided, you know what, if I can't play instead of sitting on the sideline and feel, you know, feeling sorry for myself, why not pick up a camera and, um, you know, start making videos for my, for my guys, start filming and, and contributing that way. Because one, and it's kind of an outlet for me, I can put my passion and that work ethic for basketball and, and it doesn't have to disappear. I can put it into, into, you know, making videos and, and also dude, everyone loves hype videos. Everyone wants, everyone likes hype videos and, uh, content of them. And, and I knew that could help my team. Um, and, and it could help me as well. So. Dude, it's, it's awesome for those who are hearing this, like you got to go check out his page. Like we said before, we'll put that in the description. So make sure to check out his page. Cause some of the videos you put together are actually amazing. Uh, you're not wrong. Everybody loves hype videos, uh, whether you're a fan or you're a player, yeah, but especially the players, they like to see themselves out there. You know, they like the coverage for the most part. Most players do. They, they like that stuff, especially when it's professionally done like yours. Um, and I love that you said, Dane, you know, you utilize like 
your passion for basketball and what you, your hard work ethic that you've learned and stuff. And you, you implemented that into this career. Talk to me about some of the, the lessons that, of sports outside of just the work ethic, uh, maybe be football, track, basketball, whatever you, you know, you've played that you've been able to implement into your regular life with content creation outside of just the work ethic, just a couple of life lessons from sports. Um, you know, I think it's, it's crazy just how much sports apply to real life. Um, there's so many lessons uh, that you can take into real life. Um, and I mean, one, just a simple one is you get what you put in. Um, if you want to make something happen, you have to put in the work. You have to do things to make that happen. Um, I think another lesson I learned is is just about the process. You can't you don't start out the best. But you got to start with where you're at and build on it. Um, and that that's and that was definitely true and still is for content creation and videography i dude i started on my iphone on crutches like two like a, a week after surgery like i was out there on the sideline in my crutches with my phone you know getting clips and just putting together you know little videos and then you know upgrade the equipment start learn how to learning how to use it and and it's just a process and same with sports same with life same with anything there's a process and you know, you never reach the top. You're always getting better. Um, and so the process, I think that's that's probably the biggest lesson anyone can take from sports uh, to life and, and anything really. That's huge. That is so huge. And I'm so glad I'm talking to someone like yourself, man, because there are so many lessons. That's, that's why I had this show. It's like athletes are not dumb jocks. Like they're not dumb right. jocks. They're not dumb. <laughs> I mean, sure, they, some of them can come off that way, but they're not. You learn a ton of things through sports that you can apply directly right into your life. You're hearing it right now from Dane. Like Dane, that, that's amazing right there. The process, like you're you're specifically talking about content creation, the way that you had to continuously right. learn the flow and and just <laughs> a lot of it was too. Like you did the work. Like you were you got out there with an iPhone. Okay, then you you continue to improve and do different things and and adjust as you go. And and that's a huge like <laughs> it's just it's just right. the whole process, like you said, uh, that yeah, sports can teach everybody. I mean. If you guys have ever read the book Relentless, um, it's a book yeah. by, um, I believe it's Tim Grover, and Tim, it's an amazing, it's an amazing book. Uh, I mean, it's talking about the work <laughs> ethic of like that of Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, yes. uh, those types of guys who were at the top of their game, but why they continue to improve even though they were at the top of the league, top of the game, it's because of their work ethic and the process. They continued to to get <laughs> better because you're never, you should never settle. Um, and I think yeah, that's cool. That I, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I think um, just like you said, and I think it's the same like with my ACL recovery, you know, it's about that process. I'm here. I want to be here and and you got to put the work along the way. I'm sure it's the same thing for you and your sports journey with the podcast, like with everything you're doing, you know, it's uh, it's about getting better and it's about that daily process. Um, so, yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, we can relate in a lot of ways. Any content creator yeah. understands that. But like four years ago <laughs> when I first started, I mean, I, I was you know, I was 28 when I first started, but yeah. you know, it was, no one was listening to this show. You know, like I tell people right. that all the time, man, like nobody was listening to this except for my, my really close friends and maybe some family members to be supportive, but nobody was listening. And now I can say I've been, you know, the show has been in 90 different countries all across the United I States. I mean, and then yeah. it, it's the thing you just put the work in though. You consistently grind, but you do have to make adjustments along the way. You call it right. audible, just like at the football, you know, when you get up to the yeah. line, you got to call an audible sometimes it's like in basketball, you're, you're bringing the ball up defense is showing two, three and you're like, Oh, they're not, they're not in man to man anymore. Okay. Adjust. Right. And we go at him. Um, and, and eventually if you continue to do the work though, big things can happen. And I, I love to see that from yeah. you too, man. It's super cool. And you're going into the basketball season and you're, and you're providing this, this content for the, for the team. Um, did you go to every single game? Like did the coach welcome you in there just to be like, Hey, like get the, get the footage that you need to get. Like, how was it, how were you received as far as like the rest of the team out there, um, with you with a camera all around? Yeah. So, well, I was going to be the starting point guard. And, and so my coach called me in about two weeks before the season and said, Hey man, what are your thoughts? Like, I'd love, you know, for you to help out. And I said, yeah, I said, I'll be there. Like I'll be at everything. You know, I want the spirit pack. Like I'm going to be here. Um, and I'm here to help. And, and so that was awesome. And, and, you know, it's all my buddies, all my good friends. And, and they were, they were hyped about it too. Um, they were stoked you know, to, to see the videos. And, and so everyone was super welcoming and uh, they were, they were excited. They were almost as excited as I was. So. 
That's so sick. Do they do they give you any like um, suggestions or recommendations for music and stuff like that? Were they ever throwing stuff at you like, hey, we need to have this type of a clip? Um, honestly, not not really. Um, you know, I was just kind of doing my thing, but but I always, you know, I love to to kind of include them in what I'm doing. Like, hey, check this out. Like, I'm editing this right now. What do you think? Like, is that is that sweet? And so, you know, it's just fun to include them because it's of them. They're the ones that are going to be watching it. And so, you know, love to include them in the in the process. So I dig that. Uh, when I was talking to Zach Soskin, his name, his name's Zach Soskin. He's an actual, he, he works with professional athletes as well as all the way down through high school. And he's huge about, um, athlete branding. Uh, he talks, he, he educates a lot of young athletes on branding themselves, like the proper way, like utilizing social media channels, the proper way to get your brand out there. So like, cause you can get an agent when you get to the level of like the professionals, but if they don't know you, even at the college realm, if they don't know who you are, because unfortunately there's so much content out there. If you don't have any, it's going to be hard to stand out. Right. And so he, he teaches people right. about the importance of getting, you know, content out there and branding yourself. Um, and I think it's huge that like what I was thinking when you were doing that and you, you tag players in there and people get to see this team in Marsh Valley, they get to see what's going on yeah. and it personalizes the experience and it provides the exposure that I feel those athletes deserve. And it also showcases your skill set. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I want to know, um, from your content creation standpoint in your brain, Dane, like what, when you're putting together a video, especially like, let's say like the state championship video that you just released a week ago or so, um, what is your main goal or does it change? Like with the video, when you're going into it, what, what do you want to draw out of the audience? Um, oh, I think first and foremost, you want to make them feel as if they were there. Uh, you want to make them feel like they were there for that experience. Um, but it's also, you know, it's also about who the content is of, right? Your, your, I'm the goal is to, is to make the sickest content of who I'm filming. And, and I think when you do that and when you, when you try to take the, the audience on the ride with you, um, that's when people connect with it. And that's when it benefits you because then they want to, they they become supporters. Um, and, and the, the other thing is it, it drew a lot of support from, you know, social media is a huge part of everything these days. And so alumni and old, old students and current students and parents, and they get to see these videos and, and feel as if they were there. Um, so I think that's one of the coolest parts. Feel as if they were there. Um, that's huge. I think you did a great job at that. Like you, you've continued to do a great job at that. And, and, one of the things that sticks out to me when you just released the state championship video, I'm going to con continue to reference that one because that's the most recent, yeah. like you guys just won the right. state championship. It's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. I mean, the school hadn't won a state championship in since what? 88. Am I like, when, when, when was the last state championship? 1988. Yeah. So that was the year I was born. That's what I thought. Okay. So Marsh Valley, I mean, the, the year I was born is the last time you guys won a state championship. So <laughs> this is a big, I want everyone to understand that this was a big accomplishment for this basketball team. It was huge. It was a cool run too. Not to mention, I also want to say, state something when I called your guys a second round game and I cannot remember who y'all played for the life of me, but I was doing the play by play that day. And, uh, T -tone, I believe. that's who it was. How tall is your tallest player on Marsh Valley? Um, our tallest player, um, is about six two, I would say. Yeah, it um, is on the roster yeah. when they announced it. You know, six four, whatever. But I think six two is probably our tallest guy. No, that's that's exactly right. So I went down to talk <laughs> to y'all, coach, right? And um, yeah. I had gotten some notes from the the the, the guy who done play by play the day before, and it was like, hey, they lack size. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I'm gonna go talk <laughs> to coach and. Um, and I'm standing there and, and I saw that I think the roster may have listed somebody taller than six, two, and I'm not kidding you. I am six, two, and I'm short for a basketball player. I've always said that, like, I mean, guys tower over at me and there's a lot of, you, you know how it is like anybody six, two and under, like we're yeah. just shorter, right. Than, right? than the majority of guys. And I'm standing out there and I'm like, there's nobody on this team taller than me. So this there, that's not like, this is a small team. So first and foremost, I want to mention y'all want a state championship with uh like let's be yeah. real like it was a bunch of guards uh you guys there's a lot of physicality everyone's physical but it's yeah. guard sized individuals out there yeah. running the floor getting physical doing their things so that one was awesome it's, it's it shows anybody including yeah. the team that i'm coaching for club ball 
that nobody's over six two as well. I'm like, Marsh Valley can you do can. it. You can do right. it. <laughs> it's it's possible. Um, but yeah, the video, absolutely. the video you put out, man. Um, because I was there, I can relate. Like, I thought it was so well done. Like with the emotion, like you you had like the welcome to the main event, like the, how they do the tip off yeah. and, and yeah. everything's going and it's slow motion. Even though I was there, it drew me back to that moment yeah. where I thought that was just super special and for such an uh, amazing championship for you guys first one since 88 i mean that's huge you, you're drawing people in there so if they didn't make the the trip down there because they couldn't get in yeah. there they now they get that little taste of okay i feel like i was there i get a taste of that i think that's awesome yeah. and you did a great job of that because it, it like draws that emotion and i'm sure that's exactly what you were trying to do with it yeah i, I appreciate that for sure um well what's funny is that uh you know that what they play before the game the welcome to the main event Man, that that like that gives you the chills. If you've ever been in the Idaho Center and you're about to watch the game, or even if you're about to play the game, like that that uh, you're like, okay, this is the real deal. And uh, like we as a team, I would I, I like to run the music, you know, on the bus and whatnot in the locker room, and like I would play that like like on the bus and like in the locker room before, like like you know, we we knew we knew we wanted that state championship and. And uh, yeah, that just the adding those sound effects like that really lets the the watcher and, and the audience feel as if they were there. So that that was so, fun. Totally, man. Uh, for those listening at the Idaho Center where they do host the the state tournament, the championships for all divisions are played at the Idaho Center. Five um, A plays all their games at the Idaho Center for like the winners bracket, but the, for the championships, everybody plays there and it's awesome. Uh, they get the sound system bumping. They typically play welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble. And, um, it's, it's really cool. It's loud. Um, yeah. the only thing I, I, I think could have made it better is if they had a full pack stadium, like they normally do letting everybody in, but yeah. obviously couldn't this year was a little different, but I, right. I have a question for you, Dane it's being around the yeah. team. And this is, I wanted to ask some of your guys' players too, just cause I was kind of, I was kind of involved with your guys' team during the tournament, just cause I was super intrigued yeah. by how short everybody was. But, um, right. When you get to the Idaho center, was this the first time y'all had ever played at the Idaho center in your guys' careers? Uh, yes. Um, yes. Especially for us older. Well, yeah, for everyone, we soft my sophomore year. Um, we went to state, we either won our first game and lost our second or, or lost, we lost out. Um, but, you know, we went and we went and watched the championship games. So we got to go in the Idaho center. Um, and it's just an unreal feeling. And like, we knew we wanted to get back there. Um, and well, what's funny is one of my teammates sophomore year after we lost, um, he took a picture of the Idaho center inside and he said, we're going to get back here. And anyway, so, yeah, we, we had never played in the Idaho Center, but we'd been in there, and and that's the that's the goal. You want to be in the Idaho Center playing for a championship. So that's what we were after. I think that's <laughs> awesome. I I think oftentimes people around the Treasure Valley they take it for granted because the five A schools they're just used to getting there and they play and they take it for granted. When you're coming from a school like Marsh Valley, three A, you know, smaller school so to speak. This is a huge accomplishment. Getting to the Idaho Center is actually really really cool. It's a cool venue. Um, I'm curious. Yes. I know you weren't playing, but were th this is something that I'd been asking a lot of people that hadn't never played there before. Did it yeah. throw you guys off a little bit? Did you guys have a hard time like getting used to shooting on the court, like with the depth perception? Did you hear anybody talking about it? And what about the dead spots on the court? Because when I played on the on the Idaho Center floor, obviously that was back in two thousand six. There were dead spots yeah. on the court that really upset me because when you're trying to dribble the ball, it's, it's a thud <laughs> and it doesn't bounce the same way it's supposed to. I, I'm just curious if you guys heard anything in the locker room about that. Um, not about the dead spots. No, but in the locker room, we, uh, and before we, we had conversations, um, about, you know, it is a different feel. There's, there's not a wall behind the basket. Um, and so we knew it was, it might've felt a little different, but our coach said, you know, shooter, shooters make shots no matter where they're at. And, and, and we knew that it wasn't going to be a big deal. Um, and, and, you know, you go out and start warming up and you do your best to get, um, accustomed to it and adjusted. But yeah, there definitely was that talk about, you know, it, it might, it's going to feel a little different, but, um, but yeah, like, like our coach said, it doesn't matter where you're at or where you're playing. Um, if you're, if you're, if you're good, you're going to get the job done. So. I love it, man. 
as the uh, buzzer went off and it hit zeros, you guys were winning. Um, yes. I believe. Uh, did you play McCall? Am I am I getting this right, McCall yeah. Donnelly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got to make sure I'm getting because I was covering all all the teams. So yeah, you're playing McCall Donnelly in the video. Dude throws the ball up in the air. Look at my sweat. Look at that. <laughs> dude throws the ball up in the air, flies high. What happened to the ball? Does anybody know? What Did that hit anybody? Because it just flew up in the air, and I was watching it from courtside because I'm covering the game, and I remember. Yeah. I didn't even think of it because now I'm, I'm watching the celebration, but then I watch your video, and it's like slow motion. Ball flies in the air. Who? What happened to the ball? <laughs> um. I went back and watched it, and I couldn't really tell from from my video, but uh, man, he threw it high. Holy cow! Um, <laughs> it, I think it it narrowly missed one of our players, if I remember correctly. It, uh, yeah, it it, it bounced just kind of right behind where he threw it, um, and it, I think it almost hit someone. But yeah, okay. he, yeah, that was. I'm just glad it didn't hurt anybody. I have got a buddy. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share an experience real quick for everybody. This yeah. is a le lesson. Um, one of the funniest things I've ever watched in my entire life. My junior year, I'm on JV. We're waiting for the sophomore game to get over. Um, my buddy gives up a layup to the the opposing team at the buzzer. He switched off when he wasn't supposed to. They make a layup on his guy who he left, and they hit it at the buzzer and win. So out of frustration, you know, he just yeah. launches the ball up in the air because he's mad. And as he's walking, that same ball just comes down and drills him right in the head. <laughs> and uh, it just added to the fire. And all of us were oh, like, oh, goodness. no. Because he was so – I mean, obviously, it probably hurt because he wasn't expecting it. But he was obviously – he was angry <laughs> and throwing a fit. And then it hit him so he looked dumb. And it was one of the funniest right. things I've ever remembered. So I, I saw the ball fly up. And I'm like, what happened to that ball, dude? Did somebody get hit? Nobody did. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. safe. Yeah. But uh, what was your feeling um, – as a, as a part of that team, even as a content creator, you know, you've been there the whole season when, when the clock hit zeros, explain to me the feeling of being a state champion, Dane. Uh, you know, everyone says it's indescribable and it, and it really is. It's, it's a feeling that you you can't really get anywhere else. Um, and, and it's what we were working for all season. Um, from the very beginning, there was something special and we knew we had the potential to, to go deep into the tournament. And so, man, just that, just that feeling of, you know, we did it. The, the hard work pays off. Um, and, and for me personally, it was super special because, um, and I, and I saw, I mentioned it in one of my posts, but that was the same team that I tore my ACL against in football. And so it was just this kind of special moment for me personally. Um, and, and being behind the lens, um, you kind of get a different, an angle on it you get it um, you know it's a different point of view but and so you get to see it all you get to see everyone's reaction um you get to see the crowd in the background but it really it felt as if i had just got done playing um because you know knowing i was a part of it but i mean it's an incredible feeling for sure what i love about this dane is the fact that you helped basketball fans you help the community see sports through literally a different lens that's the yeah. whole mantra of my podcast is to help people see sports through a different <laughs> lens but you literally yeah. did that throughout the entire season and i think it's fantastic i want to know uh and the listeners want to know for you you know you're about six months into your your uh, rehab process you're, you're trying to rebuild your knee and get everything set but i want to know like from the content creation standpoint from the sports standpoint like from from your regular life standpoint What's next for Dane Wissenbach? Um, that's a good question. Um, and uh, what is next? Um, you know, I don't know specifically what's next. Um, but, you know, right now I'm just embracing where I'm at. And I was looking through your Instagram today and, and I found something that I think really ties into this. But and I've got it pulled up. You said the Lord is the master at chess. Um, let the Lord into your journey. And and I'm you know I'm religious and I believe in God. And um, you said allow the Lord into your journey, and you'll be amazed at what can happen. And when you do that, the right people and the right opportunities uh, will fall you know in front of you. And so that's just what I'm trying to do right now. I don't know if I'm going to pursue my, this videography avenue. Um, you know, cause things can change so fast, but whatever I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do it big and I'm going to, you know, follow where I'm being led and going to make the most out of, out of what's next. So I dig that, man. I dig that a lot. 
Um, I'm a firm believer, and that's why I posted that. And yeah. I appreciate you even yeah. taking the time to look at that because some people don't yeah. even care. But right. uh, I'm a firm believer that the man above, um, he's playing chess, and yeah. eventually he'll put you in a spot where you can say checkmate, and you just kind of have to let let him work, um, and, and eventually you'll be where you need to be. But right here, where you're at right now, is where he wants you to be, and he's right. moving pieces around uh, strategically for you. So I love to hear that. Um, and I can't wait to see, you know, wh wherever it takes you, man. I just appreciate yeah. you as a, as a fellow content creator. I appreciate you. And as a fellow athlete, I appreciate you because yeah. you utilize the skill sets. Then you utilize content creation to bring sports to people <laughs> and have a, a broader reach, um, make it a, a more unique experience for not only the players and the coaches and the whole program, but for the fans. Uh, like you said, you brought people to the game. You made them feel like they were there. Uh, that's something yeah. that's missing, I believe, in, in a lot of places, and we're trying to help with that. So I appreciate you for for doing that. And, uh, man, I'm rooting for you for whatever you decide yeah. to do. Um, definitely, you got a friend in me, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. And, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I love what you're doing also. You guys, you know, you and, and EBC and those other guys um, and what you're doing with the podcast, you know, you guys are you guys are doing your thing. You're um, You're doing awesome things. And – and I think, you know, people like us relate. We're we're putting stuff out there and we're sharing our journey and sharing and bringing value with the hopes to, you know, to bring value, to to make things better, um, you know, add some goodness into the world. And so I think that's why we relate. And uh, yeah, I love what you're doing as well, man. So I appreciate that. You rock, brother. Ladies yes, and sir. gentlemen, Dane Wisson back from Marsh Valley. The guy is phenomenal. Make sure to go check out his pages. I'll put them in the description. And for anybody who's listening, appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts if you guys can. We'll be coming to you every single Friday with a new interview. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars, and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.